Hello everybody, it's Peter Lawn here. Today I'm going to do a little bit of a tutorial for you on how to do a little bit of a longer teleport range than you're normally used to in No Man's Sky. Um, and I'm going to be using the No Man's Sky uh, save game editor as well as the Blender plugin uh, in order to achieve this. But the goal is for this tutorial is to try to move this teleporter here uh, which is connected to this teleporter here. Um, I want to move it out onto that peak over by another base that I have um, about 10 minutes away walking distance. And of course the, the real challenge with that is um, that uh, it's really hard to figure out exactly how to place the teleporter at that location down there. So I'm going to show you a method of triangulation that should work for um, for most of your applications and uh, we'll see what we can do anyways um, this is not a tutorial on how to use blender or how to use the no man's uh, sky save game editor this is just simply how i managed to move the teleporter that uh, distance and you can pretty much move it to very very far away um, you know you have to start taking into consideration the curvature of the planet when you start doing that um, but uh, you can experiment with it and, and try this method to see how far out you can get it. I think the farthest I've ever pushed one out was a little over 8,000 units away. So uh, we'll see <coughs> how we uh, fare in pinpointing this location out there. So, Okay, so this is a, a good spot. I'm about uh, uh, 477 units away from my base, sort of to the left of it. Uh, there's our other base in the distance where we're going to be wanting to put the teleporter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop down a wall, half wall, if I can get my mouse working properly here. And I want to point that half wall, you know, directly at that base. And uh, so if I kind of come in here and sight that second base up, there. All right, so then this location here is pretty decent. It's about 400 units away from my base here. We're going to do the same thing on this side here. We're going to um, uh, drop a little half wall um, down here, pointing at as close as possible to where that base is. Right there looks good. And um, so now what we're going to do, now that we've done that, we want to save our base and um, and then pull it into Blender. All right, so the first thing we need to do to get our base into Blender is to start the No Man's Sky save game editor. Uh, we are going to load up our particular save game that has <clears throat> our platform and two teleporters on it. Um, so we go into edit the raw JSON is the option we're picking here. We go into player state data. We go a little ways down into persistent player bases. And I've got two base entries down at the bottom. There's 19 and 20. 19 is the one with our teleporters on it. So we're going to highlight all of the, uh, the base components. So we're going to go control A. We're going to go control C to copy it and then we're going to go into Blender and we're going to use the import NMS button to import that base into Blender. So there you have it. Um, so first thing we need to do is to go and um, size up our uh, triangulation objects uh, so that we can actually see them when we're zoomed way out because you, you can see you can barely see this thing um, and we have to zoom out quite a ways out right so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to size these up to about 10 times their uh, normal size and so we're going to go find the one on this side and here it is here so we'll go size bring that up to 10 times and um, now we can actually see them when we're zoomed out quite a ways, which is uh, very handy, right? Which is great. Um, so we're going to take a top-down view for a moment, and uh, here we've got those two those two walls that are there. 
And uh, what we need to do is find that triangulation point between those two walls, because uh, that should be a close approximation of where that other base computer is, right? Uh, so the first thing you need to do is adjust your transform orientation in global. For example, if we're moving this particular um, uh, guy anywhere, and we just go G and then we go X, it's going to move globally along the X and Y axis, which is not what we want. We want it to follow the, um, the where that you know device or object is pointing, right? So uh, we change that to um, local. And um, if I go G to the X now, you can see now it's going to follow that um, that straight line, right? Same thing with this guy, G to the X. Oops, G to the X, and it's going to... So what we want to do is move both these out um, to a point where they're going to sort of cross, right? So I'm going to pick both of them. I'm going to go G to the X, and you can see that they're going to eventually meet. So that's what we're going to do right now, is we're going to zoom out a little bit. We're going to go G to the X until we cross over. We're going to zoom in a little bit closer to these guys, just to G to the X, make sure I'm exactly where I want to be. Right there. Now I'm going to move this one, G to the X. Until we cross perfectly over. And now what we're going to do is I'm going to move my... Um, cursor there. I get that's You do that by going shift S and then cursor to selected. And the reason why we're going to do that is just so that we can see where this thing needs to go, right? We're also going to go in and, and delete these two. We don't need them anymore. We'll leave that cursor there. Now we're going to move the, um, the teleporters, right? So I want to zoom in here for a second. I've got power to the one that I want to move. Um, so what we're going to do is we're just going to hide these for a second. Um, actually, you know what? I'll leave that there as is. Um, what you need to do is you need to make sure that um, at this point in time that you uh, you switch your, your uh, transform orientations to normal. Um, because you're, you're going to be selecting multiple objects and you're going to be moving them and you want them all to remain, uh, to have their relative positions to each other remain intact, right? So in this case here, I'm going to pick the teleporter, the teleporter cable connection, and the teleporter electrical connection. And I want to pick this um, connector down here as well, right? So now if I move this teleporter, you can see it's, it's going to move, you know, um, everything around, but it's going to maintain its connection electrically and the teleporter cable to the to the uh, starting teleporter. Right? All right, so now we're going to take a look at a top-down direction. We're going to zoom way the heck out. We know that our 3D cursor is where we need to move that um, teleporter. I've got the, the proper thing selected over there at my base computer already. So now I'm just going to use the G key and I'm going to place it right where the 3D cursor is, right? I'm going to zoom in, get a little more accurate, put it right there. That thing I'm going to do too is I'm going to add um, just uh, some concrete floor underneath this teleporter. It gives me some room to step off of it when I land there. And uh, the other thing I want to do as well is I want to extend this down below the Earth's surface or below the, below the mesh surface in this uh, power connection, right? So we're going to highlight this to hide it. And we're going to grab this connector point And we're going to kind of look at it from a side view. And I'm going to zoom way out. And I'm going to... G to the Z. I'm going to drop this thing way down, right? And I can do it down at the other end as well. Sort of. I'm going to get to my base. Oop. And now I'm going to 
highlight that one connector that's under my power source and I'm going to zoom way out. I'm also going to drop that one way down, right? How far down? Well, as far down as you need to to hide the wires, right? You know, one thing about it in Blender is um, you can actually run these power wires real long ways, right? Um, you don't have the same limitations as you do in the game itself. So, all right, so I've got this teleporter, um, you know, positioned way the heck out, and it should be by the um, location that I want it. Um, what I do want to do is zoom in a little bit closer. And the one thing I want to do is I want to add some, and I usually do this because it just helps me position it sort of a little bit later on, is to add a, uh, a wall, a concrete wall, just kind of there. And I'm going to rotate this thing 180 degrees. And the reason I do that is because then I can just quickly add a bunch of walls down. And you say, why do you do that? The reason is because if I'm above the ground, I can count how many sections of wall there is above the ground and then be able to position, do that final position, right? But I'm going to test this out and see how accurate and close we are, and uh, hopefully it works. All right, so what we want to do now is we want to go back to um, No Magnet Sky Save. What we'll do is we'll export out of the Blender. Go back into here, Control V, exit, save changes, get out of this thing, and go back into the game and load up our auto save. All right, so there's our one teleporter. The other one should be outside, out there somewhere, um, and hopefully we'll see where we end up here. Well, look at that. Pretty darn close. Um, there's my first base. This is where we are on this peak. You can see we got pretty pretty close, right? So the first thing you should do too is you should rotate that um, teleporter around. But essentially, all I need to do is is you know kind of come up and over a little bit good to go right and the rest of it's just fine-tuning right and it looks like uh, we probably buried the cables far enough um, and you can just move it slightly to uh, you know to get it where position where you want it's positioned right and uh, there you go that's how I did it